and welcome to our fourth episode of our Frequently Asked Questions series on Immersion Cooling Solutions. As before, we've consolidated some questions we get regularly from inquiries, and we've put them together here for you. Asperitas recently commissioned a market research survey on data centre cooling with Ondia. It showed that reliability is one of the top drivers for adopting liquid cooling amongst enterprise, hyperscaler and co-location companies. The research also showed that safety and maintenance concerns are top priorities for adopting liquid cooling. So this episode focuses specifically on the partnership between Asperitas and Unica data centres. This collaboration ensures the best customer experience out there. So without further ado, let me introduce our speakers for today. Hamza Wibrahim, Project Manager at Asperitas, and Marco Van Slot, Director of Data Center Managed Services at Unica Data Centers. Thanks for joining, guys. Thank you, Emilia. Thank you. Okay, and before we begin, Hamza, can you explain a little bit about your role at Asperitas? I'll uh, be happy to do that. Um, within uh, Asperitas, uh, I'm responsible for operations. Uh, operations uh, could mean a lot of things, but in uh, in uh, what we do, it actually uh, includes all the activities uh, of after sales, uh, meaning delivery, uh, fulfillment, maintenance, and uh, service. So we actually uh, go along in the, uh, we help the customer with his journey in uh, terms of uh, uh, accepting the product and putting it into operations. And we also help him with all types of trainings, but we'll come back to that in a, in a later question. Uh, another important uh, part of what we do is the acceptance of the product. Once the product is ready at, a, uh, at, uh, at our manufacturing site, it is up to uh, uh, operations to accept the product from a functional point of view, but also from quality point of view before we deploy the product to our customer. So these are, uh, in a nutshell, uh, the most important activities that operation does. Thank you, Hamza. And uh, Marco, could you introduce yourself? Sure, Emilia. Um, probably most people know Unica data centers from design and build of data centers. And in that role, we have done some great projects for hyperscalers, for colos, telcos, and enterprises. But what most people don't know is that we serve our customers during the whole data center life cycle. So also after the project handover. And within Unica data centers, I'm responsible for that service portfolio. So let's say the operate and maintain services. Okay, hey, excellent. Well, thank you to you both. Well, let's get started. On to the first question. Can you describe the partnership between Asperitas and Unica? Hamza. Um, uh, Emilia, uh, as, as, as you know, uh, Aspiritas is a global company and uh, for uh, our service strategy, we have adopted what we call a, a local partnerships in order to be able uh, to uh, help and service uh, our customers on a local basis. Um, uh, Aspiritas uh, partnership with Unica means uh, that uh, Unica takes care of uh, the execution of most of the operational uh, of the operational um, uh, processes, such as commissioning, maintenance, uh, and uh, and service. Uh, at the start of our partnership, we spent quite a bit of time with uh, engineers from Unica to train them. They've been certified. Uh, they are quite acquainted with our product, with our technology, and they are certainly in a position uh, to help our customer whenever it is uh, needed. So we are very happy to have Unica as a partner, uh, as a service partner for uh, the Benelux. Excellent. Marco? Yeah, we truly believe in emerging cooling technology and Aspiritas project uh, product can be game changing in data center cooling philosophy. That's what we feel. So that's also why we chose this partnership, because we want to support our customers in achieving their cooling needs and also the sustainability goals. Uh, and as mentioned by Aspiritas, our role in this partnership is to bring our expertise on data center commissioning, maintenance and operations. And we do that with a team of technicians who are um, uh, experienced in working in data centers and are also experienced 
with working on uh, high standards like risk management, business continuity, security, and of course, personal safety. Good to know. Thanks for explaining that, guys. Now, on to question two. How is the tank connected to the data center? Marco. Yeah, actually, it's quite easy. The Asperitas module will be connected to the data center facility infrastructure for power, for cooling, and for network. The module there is therefore equipped with standard power cables and standard water hoses. Uh, the connection is very simple and straightforward. So after that, we have connected the module to the power feeds and to the water cooling system, and the system has been tested. The operator of the data center facility will energize and pressurize those connections. And even though the actual works is very easy, it's important to it, do it very properly uh, and very careful. So we need full cooperation of the customer and the representative uh, uh, of the data center facility. Hamza, anything to add on? Uh, I think you explained it quite well. There's uh, just a small addition to this is the uh, network connection uh, that uh, our product uh, offers is very important uh, to mention is that we uh, provide also uh, for the management of the system itself a portal and uh, uh, a customer can access this uh, portal via this network connection. And the portal provides all types of data that are collected from the, from the different sensors uh, that are embedded in our uh, own system. So this is a very important part of the management of the system. Good to know, that's a good addition. Um, so let's go on to the second one that leads us on to about the water quality testing. How's that done? Um, the, the, let me first, before I answer directly your question, how it is done, uh, to uh, really stress the importance of water quality. Water quality also is of paramount importance uh, to the performance uh, of our product. Um, actually, what we do uh, before installing a system uh, at a customer, at a data center, uh, for our customer, uh, we always do a sampling of the water. Uh, the uh, water sample uh, will be tested uh, by a well-known laboratory, uh, which we always do, and the test results are always discussed with the uh, with the customer. And on the basis uh, of those results, uh, some uh, measures can be taken in order to make sure uh, that the specification and the requirements of our product in terms of water quality is uh, satisfied. So. So again, this is a very uh, important uh, uh, part uh, of uh, the whole discussion uh, with the, the uh, customer. So the first actually contact with the with the data center is sampling the water, making sure that it uh, it uh, fulfills and is compliant with some of our with our specifications. And our specifications are based on an ASHRAE, the ASHRAE guidelines, uh, which are uh, well known in this world in terms of water quality. Okay, thank you, Hamza. Um, Marco, are you able to add? Yeah, we can't express it enough. Water quality is very important. Uh, uh, we have the same experience. Most data center users are quite aware of the importance of it, but unfortunately, we still see sometimes some bad water quality. So yeah, Im important to check. And also during the lifetime and use of the system, we do during the annual visits, uh, water sampling to double check the water quality is still according to the specifications. OK, good to know. Let's move on to question four. Are there any risks for tank leakage? Very important question as well. Uh, the answer is very short and, and clear. No, as the tank is double hold. Uh, a minimal to zero risk due to the design that we have chosen. And uh, on top of that, uh, it is nice to and uh, good to add uh, that, the, uh, uh, that the tank itself is uh, tested under very harsh conditions during, uh, during production. Um, our product also includes a water detection sen uh, uh, sensor and also a level uh, a sensor, which uh, all help in uh, monitoring all these type of issues that could uh, uh, that could happen. 
Marco, yeah, what a bit from a Unica perspective. Yeah, maybe to add a little bit uh, about the connectivity. Uh, we mentioned uh, already that we have standardized the interconnection based on proven and best industry practices. So from that point of view, we minimized any risk of leakage outside of the module. Uh, next to that, of course, part of our maintenance check is that we double check all connections and appendages to the system preventively. And what we normally see in data centers is that clients also check during visual inspections on any issues with systems. And what we see in some bigger installations and I expect also to be used in uh, by using emerging cooling technology is that surrounding areas will be checked by monitoring system, a leakage detection systems, for example, through sensors or sensor cables. That's good to know. That's really reassuring, actually. So yeah, yeah thanks for explaining that. Let's move on to the next question. How is the pressure testing done? Marco, you start. Yeah, pressure testing is part of a testing procedure, which is very important in data centers. And what we have done as Unica is we adapted the data center industry standards for commissioning processes already for years ago. So customers will surely recognize commissioning steps like the FAT, the factory acceptance test, but also, for example, the SAT, the site acceptance test. So as part of this testing methodology, we also do quite intensive pressure testing of the cooling system. Of course, we start with the FAT, where the system will be fully pressurized and tested in the production facility, like Hansa already mentioned, and that will be done under controlled circumstances. But also after the module has been installed on site, we do severe testing, first of all with, test, with, with air, just to uh, validate any damages, for example, as a result of the transportation. And after that successful, is, uh, successful test, we fill and vent the system and do a water pressure test. And by using this digital measuring equipment, we are able to de detect even yeah, very small deviations uh, if there are. And once the test is finished, we energize and power the system and start operating it. Hamza, interesting. Any addition? Yeah. Something I missed? Uh, I, I think uh, it is quite uh, well explained. Absolutely. Yeah, 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 that's a good explanation. Thank you. Um, let's move on to the next question. We've got one on the fluid here. And could you explain, Hamza, maybe you could start with this one. Um, how safe is the fluid? Now, uh, from our perspective, it's not treated as a harmful uh, chemical uh, substance, and uh, there are no regulation as of now uh, that we know of that require specific measures in order to handle uh, the uh, synthetic oil. Uh, I think we ha it is very safe. Uh, we've had experience with this uh, liquid for now a few years, and uh, we can attest to that, uh, that we have, uh, we uh, uh, feel quite safe to uh, work with this, uh, uh, with this oil. Okay, and uh, Marco, can you add anything to this? Yeah, I would say as in, uh, as in any other installation, we train our technicians uh, yeah, properly. So that means that we explain about the products to use. And in this case, also learn about the safety data sheet, which is included with the product. Uh, and we equip our uh, staff, of course, with the right protection equipment. And although it's not a harmful liquid, it's important also to take the right measures not only from a safety perspective, but only simple uh, because we want to uh, work clean. So we have spill kits available and spill material like clots. So if we spill some uh, of the liquid outside your module, we can clean the area, the surrounding area. So even though it's not harmful, we try to prevent any yeah, um, um, spill or any issues with the liquid. Okay, yeah, that's that's good. Um, that I actually do have a statement here from Shell, um, and I can just add to to what you guys have already explained. So we have um, Shell immersion cooling fluids are based on odorless and aromatic free synthetic hydrocarbons. The products have extremely low volatility, so less fuming, mist, and vapors formation, and very low levels of VOCs. So that's volatile organic compounds. It is unlikely that the products present any significant health or safety hazards when properly used. Guidance on health and safety is available in the safety data sheet. So that's what you mentioned before, Marco. Yeah, so, it yeah. says it all. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. 
So that moves us on to the next question. So question seven is, how do we support the data centre operator with their daily operational activities? Yeah, as part of the installation and commissioning process, we will train the customer technicians on how to operate the system. So we do that from a technical perspective, but also from an operational perspective. So we learn them how to load and unload IT equipment, for example, and how to level the liquid if required. Uh, we call that the operational tasks, and we do that and train them to do this in a safe and controlled manner. Uh, what we also do and explain is uh, and show is how to operate the service trolley, which is included with the delivery. It uh, has an, a lifting mechanism, but it can also be used for liquid cleaning. So all quite very simple tasks, but it's good to have it demo demonstrated for the first time. So that's why it's part of the commissioning process. Hamza, any addition? Uh, once more, uh, uh, I think Marco, you uh, did an excellent job in explaining how we can support them. Uh, and maybe a very small uh, uh, addition is that um, uh, our customer know uh, how uh, to get in touch with us. Uh, I will come back to the service platform that we uh, have developed. And it is very important for us and Unica together to have this interaction with the customer. Yeah, and perhaps the, the next question as well, we can dive a little bit deeper into this. Um, what does the support program actually look like? So, Marco, if you could explain a bit more about this. Yeah, yeah, we understand that this technology and this product could be new for some customers. So in the beginning, we expect some questions and maybe some uh, uh, support requests. So we spend some time during the commissioning, but also after that, there is plenty of contact uh, possibilities available to to help customers with that. Uh, and I think in the beginning there will be some questions, but since the system is so easy to operate, I expect that the most of the customers can help themselves quite uh, quite quickly. Uh, but also we have an annual maintenance visit where we check the system and where we can also answer questions from que uh, from uh, customers. And yeah, even uh, if it's needed, we can demonstrate the operational task again. And uh, Hamza, can you add to this? Uh, yeah, maybe uh, just one small point to uh, be added is that uh, in, in in our contracts with our customers, uh, we always uh, add the three year contract for maintenance. Maintenance is done once a year uh, based on the checklist. I think that uh, people from uh, Marco's organization are uh, uh, very familiar with, and we follow uh, such a, a protocol to do the uh, to do the uh, the maintenance. And once more, our open communication with the customer uh, together with Unica is very important to have this dialogue. Uh, yeah. As Marco said, it might be a new technology, a new product for the customer. So you always have some questions in terms of how to do things, uh, what they should do and should not do. So that open communication is very important uh, to support the customer. Uh, that's good. So, yeah, the, the customer always has that reassurance that, um, that we're all part of the same team, right? Yeah, exactly. That's good. Excellent. Yeah. That moves us swiftly on to question nine. How do we ensure efficient service management? Hamza. Actually, this ties in to the last question uh, in terms of uh, having communication. Communication is very important, but uh, as uh, our installed base and our business grows, uh, it is very important for them to have access uh, to us uh, at all times. And for this, we uh, developed a an online service uh, uh, platform. And uh, this service platform gives uh, uh, access to our customers to our first line uh, support. If any incident or any information for that matter, not just an incident that can be reported or any information that is needed, uh, it can be uh, it can be uh, requested uh, through this uh, this uh, platform. Uh, this platform is 24 hours a day, uh, seven days a week available. And uh, the first uh, contact uh, when an, especially an incident is reported is our first line uh, support organization. And in the case of the Benelux, Unica is our uh, service partner for the first line. 
uh, Aspirita stays and is uh, uh, responsible for the second line uh, support, indeed second and third line, indeed uh, in, in case that is uh, needed. So it is uh, very uh, important that people uh, know about this and use it. Uh, people have the tendency to just pick up a phone and call, uh, but as our business will grow, uh, we will need to uh, have our customers uh, be more familiar with this uh, facility and the service platform that we offer with this product. Yeah, it's good to know that that support is available at every step, right? Yeah, exactly. Good. Yeah. Thanks for explaining that, Hamza. Because um, that takes us to our can last question, can, actually. In fact, Marco, would you like to add to, to this the, first? Yeah, can I have a short addition to the previous question? Yeah, absolutely. Sorry to interrupt. I I, I would absolutely uh, give the compliments to Asperitas and the teams because they were not only developing a very good product for emerging cooling technology, but also developed professional documentation and very good support processes and tools. This is the way of working which we should all adapt in the data center industry. So I'm very happy and the compliments again to see that Asperit is not only focusing product development, but also everything which is uh, required to, to help our customers in the right way. So thanks for that. Yeah, I, of course, I couldn't agree more. <laughs> yeah, thank you, Marco. Okay, last but not least then, how do we see this partnership developing over the next five years? Hamza, would you like to explain? Um, now our uh, partnership with uh, Unica and, and, and other partners in other parts of the world will, will only grow uh, as the business grows. It is very clear that, uh, uh, as uh, Marco was saying earlier, uh, this technology is a game changer in the data, in the cooling, in the, the data center. So the growth will be there, and uh, uh, and 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 the growth uh, depends on one important uh, factor, and uh, really, and that is a major driver, and that is the uh, OEMs uh, that will uh, embrace this technology and make sure that they uh, provide uh, the market uh, with uh, immersion ready servers. And we've seen that happening uh, a few years ago. We as Aspiritas has uh, have to actually redesign the whole server in order to make it uh, immersion ready. And we see now that the OEMs, major OEMs are coming into the market with uh, immersion ready servers and I can state uh, the example of Gigabyte with whom we've worked for the last years. Uh, they have in the market an immersion ready server uh, which is very familiar to us and we've been working with that. And there are not only Gigabyte which I state, there are other major, major OEMs uh, working in that direction and them embracing this technology will uh, mean growth. And growth will also mean uh, uh, mean something for the relationship that we have with Inica. We, Inica, we will grow together, and we will uh, we will have to uh, actually manage the growth as it comes, uh, because it is our uh, belief that it will be there. Yeah, it's exciting times, right? And Marco, I'm sure you would agree. Yeah, I fully agree. It's up to the market now, OEMs and and customers. Uh, and I think our partnership brings a professional basis for the customers in the Bonnelux uh, who are ready to adopt immersion cooling. Uh, we are ready to support in this journey and we are prepared to implement in high numbers. So I would say, let's go. Yeah, me we're too. ready for it. Yeah, we're, we we're ready. ready. Yeah, we're definitely ready. And uh, yeah, that, that brings us to a close. Um, uh, exciting times ahead, um, as I said before. And um, yeah, I just wanted to wish you all thanks for participating in this fourth frequently asked questions episode and i look forward to the next one and uh, thanks to the listeners and viewers for joining us and if anyone has any more questions and um, please refer to the Speditas and unica data centers websites which you can see here you can also request an online demonstration to discuss the integrated technology in more depth and lastly you can connect with these speakers on LinkedIn, if you wish. So both Hamza and Marco um, will be on LinkedIn if you want to connect with them directly. So that's really all from us. And thanks again to you, Hamza and Marco. And see you, you in the next episode. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.